Hello and welcome to this series of interviews of Science Cybersecurity. Today we will discuss the Digital Operation Resilience Act, a new piece of cybersecurity legislation in Europe which target the operation resilience of financial sectors. With me, um, I have uh, my colleague, Eva Serva, who will join me and we would both provide you as comprehensive as possible overview of this rather complex legislation. But first things first, what is DORA? Uh, DORA is a regulation. It aims at the financial sector and ensures that it has a digital resilience integrate. It is not a completely new regulation. Uh, it is an update that brings the comprehensive overview of um, all components of operational resilience for financial sector. In the past, we had financial sector regulation, which covered specific components and aspects, including um, more targeted on the qualitative rules for the um, more targeted on the quantitative rules for operational resilience, such as credit risk, market risk. Um, and now DORA explicitly aims to bring this um, regulation more towards the complete set of operational resilience, including risks of um, cybersecurity, um, testing, as well as third party risk management. It is important to know that uh, it is not the only legislation for cybersecurity. We have the NIS2 at the EU level that uh, address the increased level of cybersecurity of critical infrastructure, and um, DORA acts as a leg specialis in the sense it complements uh, NIS2 and it's directly applicable for financial sector. But I have Eva uh, here in my team that will share with you who is impacted and when they have to act. Hello, everybody. Um, right, so um, DORA actually came into force, um, entered into force in January 2023, together with the NIS, the NIS2 directive. Um, and it will be applicable to companies in uh, two years time, in about two years time in January 2025. Um, DORA introduces a broadened scope compared to um, already existing pieces of legislation that Eva mentioned previously, and um, together with the already covered uh, financial entities, um, such as credit institutions, payment institutions, insurance companies, they were already regulated. Um, we have a new requirement for third party, um, th uh, third ICT party providers that will be covered. Um, in DORA too. What does that mean? Uh, what we mean with uh, third parties, um, for example, these are companies whose core business has nothing to do with financial uh, uh, with financial business, but they do provide uh, maybe projects, services, products to a financial entity that's covered in DORA. Um, for instance, we talk about telecommunication companies such as internet providers, software providers, hardware providers, or cloud computing providers. And just because they they are all part of the ecosystem and they're all part of the supply chain, they will be um, subject to the new DORA regulation. And in a way, we say that those companies, they work completely independently from one another. Their, their core business has nothing to do um, with one another, but at the same time, they, they work together at the same time. Um, and why did DORA actually come into, into being? And the proposal was actually um, introduced during the peak of the COVID pandemic in, in 2020, in September 2020. Um, it, was, um, it was not really the result of the pandemic and the sort of the rapid transformation in terms of digitalization that happened um, at the initial months of COVID because the, the fintech sector was, the financial sector was already going through a very rapid transformation. Uh, we talk about online banking, mobile banking, the rise of the fintech. So it, it was really already happening, but the um, law uh, had to adapt to the new normal. And um, at the same time, also malicious actors, they do adapt to the new normal and they do try to um, find the softest spot 
the where the vulnerability might occur and uh, try to target their uh, them try to interfere with the work of their main target. Uh, so this is why we talk about the supply chain. This is why we talk about the um, regulations for the new um, the new requirements for the ICT service providers because exactly because of the rise um, in the supply chain attacks. Um, a bit of a bit of data here. Uh, we the financial sector is one of the most targeted sectors. It has always been one of the most targeted sectors, but especially in the latest. The last few years. Um, for example, in 2021, we have 2,527 um, reported cyber incidents in the financial industry worldwide, and they have been up from 722 in the previous years in 2020. And here we're talking about a, a, a threefold increase of cyber incidents. Um, however, in even though we have this major increase, um, luckily the um, cyber incidents that resulted in data disclosure or major loss, um, they remain stable. Um, at the same time, we have uh, some data from the World Economic Forum and from ANCOR, and they report that between 39% and 62% of organizations were affected by a third party related cyber incident. And um, according to Mandian, supply chain compromises were the second most prevalent initial infection vector identified in 2021. And they also account for 17% of the in, in, in incidents in 2021, which compared to 2020, which was less than 1%, is quite a huge increase. So this is why Dora was put forward, the new requirements were put forward, and now Eva, up to you, what are these new requirements? Indeed, so you laid the ground very well. We know what we are fighting, what regulators are trying to address as an issue. Um, and in a nutshell, they, they see at least the Dora uh, requirements are uh, circulating around implementation of effective cyber resilience measures and testing as well as managing ICT supplier security risks that we have a very well presented that they are there prevalent, um, including the review of critical ICT providers uh, during a due diligence check. And last but not least, report, report, report cybersecurity incidents. If we deep dive into these requirements, you will notice for those of you that are familiar with cybersecurity, um, information security standards that they resemble a lot the NIS 27001 philosophy of define, manage the risks, as well as implement measures. And here the measures are, are really aligned with the NIST framework, where you focus on identification, uh, protection, detection, uh, response, and recovery. If we wonder, okay, this is very generic, very nice to have, um, the regulator also wrote down specific measures that each of those categories should include. For instance, the uh, definition of the policies, it's very specific. You have to have internal governance and control framework that ensures an effective and here is the key prudent management of ICT risks. This I find very curious um, why we focus on the prudent. So here again, the financial sector very um, traditionally strongly regulated sector remains very, um, let's say, with the strong requirements. Um, on the other hand, we have strong risk management framework requirements. So ICT risk management should have a sound and comprehensive and well-documented ICT risk management for framework as part of their overall risk management systems which, and here again, the devil is in the details as always, uh, enables financial entities to other tackle ICT risks quickly, efficiently, and comprehensively. So this is not just about having something and looking at risks. This is not, these requirements go beyond the expect financial entities to act upon risks quickly and effectively, comprehensively. 
this we know it's usually a challenge for companies, especially when we speak about comprehensive strategy in connected ICT world. This is uh, really a, a, a big workload eventually. What is next in the requirements list? Um, you have uh, to use uh, uh, and maintain secure system, updated ICT systems protocols and tools. So here again, focus on lifecycle management of ICT tools and system. And we deep dive uh, or the regulator deep dives in uh, DORA with the specific aspects um, of measures around identification, where it even specify what should be identified. And it goes as shall identify, classify, and adequately document all ICT supported business functions, roles and responsibilities, the information assets, and, IC and ICT assets supporting those functions, and their roles and dependencies in relation to ICT risks. Probably many of you, if you're not familiar with cybersecurity, this is a lot of words, it doesn't make much sense. What you should retain is document everything, identify what you have, who you depend on, how your processes and the assets interact. And that's already difficult to achieve. Now you also have to prove compliance with the regulation. On the second part, protection um, and prevention, we have to obligations for continuously monitor and control the security and functioning of ICT systems and tools. This is very important specification because it's not only about security issues, but also about resilience, continuity, availability of ICT systems. Um, expectation of regulators to achieve a high standard of availability, authenticity integrity and confidentiality of data um, and this extends not only for the data that you have stored in your systems but also for the data in transit on the detection side um, re mandatory requirement includes um, mechanism and this is broad language it would differ for different companies but you have to have in place a mechanism to promptly detect anomalous activities. Uh, attention point here, we don't speak only about incidents. We speak about anomalies before you correlate them to incident. Expectation for regulator also is to detect network performance issues and ICT related incidents, which is not necessarily cyber issue. It, is, it goes to any ICT performance issues. And authentic identify potential material single points of failure. And last but not least, on the response and recovery side, in the security measures, it's expected that companies have ICT business continuity policy, and this one is comprehensive as well. Um, these are the measures, but what happens when incident happens? Um, there's very strict requirements also on this side. What do you do when an incident occurs? Uh, first and foremost, you have to have crisis communication plans. Um, they should be enabling a responsible disclosure of at least major ICT uh, incidents or here or vulnerabilities to clients and counterparts, as well as the public as appropriate. Mm, no one is saying you have to. I, publicly disclose everything. Here, the requirement is very clear. You have to have the communication plan written down piece by piece, what you're going to do in all these different situations. It extends also to communication policies for internal staff and for external stakeholders as well. So you have to have very good thought process in preparing this communication plan. Traditionally, learning and evolving um, capacity based on the identify threats, vulnerability, this is also encoded in the regulation. There is also a requirement for um, specific uh, data backup, but also uh, stimulating provisions for financial entities. Uh, they are encouraged actually to share threat and vulnerability um, and threat intelligence information with peers in networks um, and groups to help everyone protect themselves. 
And um, on the obligation side, of course, I promised in the beginning, incident notification is part of the regulation. Uh, there you would have, um, there is a very strict timeline actually. Uh, so you are supposed to notify the incident within the business day. And if the incident occurs towards the end of the business day, then you have to do it before the next one, next uh, business day. Um, this I have heard from regulators is with the objective what our regulators try to avoid is that they learn about major incidents from the press. This is probably the doom and the glory of our sector. It is very exciting and it's becoming very highly mediated. So with this, you have to keep in mind, regulators would not like to be surprised from the press, try to be proactive. Um, this wraps up the security requirements, but there are also testing requirements and requirements for managing third parties and Eva is going to walk you through that. Uh, yes, so one of the novelties of DORA is actually the new, completely newly uh, regulated digital operational resilience testing requirements. And they will be applicable to all the financial entities uh, within the scope. And um, here we talk about, for example, we talk about a range of tests, such as, for instance, vulnerability assessments or scans. And we talk about um, developing methodologies, practices, and tools. That, um, and these sorts of testing, um, these digital operational resilience testing, they need to be conducted at least once a year on all ICT systems and applications supporting critical or important functions for the financial entity in question. Um, at the same time, we also have the so-called advanced testing, the TLPC, the threat led penetration testing, which is to be done every three years, at least once every three years. And um, when conducting these intelligence-based penetration testing, the technical standards are actually likely to be aligned with the Tiber EU, um, which is the European framework for threat intelligence-based ethical red teaming and uh, developed by the ECB. Um, other requirements that regulate the interconnections, the, the relationship between the financial entities and the third-party ICT, ICT third-party providers. Um, we have um, sort of the financial, so the financial entities need to approve and periodically review their policies on arrangements regarding the use of ICT service provided by the third party. Um, they need to identify and document all processes that are dependent on these third parties so that everything needs, it needs to be documented, regulated uh, in writing. Um, they need to ma maintain and periodically test appropriate ICT business continuity plans with regard to the critical or important functions outsourced or contracted through the arrangements with the, our third party providers. Basically, we're talking about uh, business continuity departments and recovery teams, um, which need to manage how critical outsource ICT. We know the phenomenon of outsourcing, how important it is in the last years and um, how these third party and um, sort of the receivers of the outsourcing um, and how they deal with the incident reporting. Last but not least, very important here, um, financial entities need to develop um, uh, security awareness programs and digital operational resilience training and awareness as sort of a, a compulsory training uh, modules for the employees and senior management, but not only. Um, they also need to include their third party providers in their relevant training schemes. This is very important because uh, as we said at the beginning, um, if these third party prices, their core businesses might have nothing to do with cybersecurity or operational resilience in general. So they need to be up to the technical standards, technical requirements, the legislative framework. So it is very important for them. It is very important for the financial entities to include um, their uh, third party providers in, the, in, in, in their trainings. And finally, um, all of these requirements that I've just listed um, needs to be regulated in sort of a contractual arrangement between a financial entity and the third and the third party. Um, for ICT services supporting critical and important functions, uh, establishing a third country because clearly uh, 
not all of the companies that would, or not all of the third party third parties we're talking about would be established in the union in the European Union so we have those that are established outside um financial entities need to pay attention to 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 those that are established outside and they need to take into consideration the compliance uh, with union data protection rules um, such as for example uh, the GDPR. And if you like this overview, we wrapped up um, very comprehensive, very large legislation in just 15 minutes. So if you like these reviews, have a look in our other videos. We have reviewed the needs to uh, GDPR, but there would be new upcoming content every month. We interview different uh, cybersecurity experts on many of the topics we have just highlighted third party security management, uh, awareness and training, incident management, vulnerability management, you name it. You can find free resources on our channel, subscribe and follow us. Thank you. <laughs>